Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Eastio Roadmap Update. I am John Howard. Uh, I'm a member of the Eastio Technical Oversight Committee, who is responsible for uh, kind of being the project roadmap and, and a bunch of other things. And I'm joined with Eric, um, and we're both excited to tell you a bit about what the future of Eastio holds. So I'll hand it over to Eric. Thank you, John. Uh, my name's Eric Van Orman. Um, I started with IBM nearly 34 years ago. Um, I've probably been working on IBM Cloud for the last um, nine or 10 years and been working on Istio for probably the last four. Um, currently, I am a member of the Technical Oversight Committee. I am also the Test and Release Workgroup Lead, um, and I'm also a maintainer on the Documentation Workgroup. Um, in the past, I was release manager. Actually, I believe I was release manager with John. Um, and I continue to help the current release managers uh, as they ask questions. Um, I was also a member of the product security work group. Um, in my free time, um, I try to fly my LERP planes and do some ham radio stuff. Um, so with that, um, let's take a, let's see here. Let's take a, a look back um, since this GeoCon 2022. Um, typically, we, we try to start these um, talks with a set of discussions, and there's usually a slide, and I didn't make one up, um, that talks about something about either Istio or Service Mesh as um, just sort of a, you know, kickoff slide. Um, so I, I did look up a couple of stats um, to sort of kick this off. Um, I did look at the 2022 CNCF Service Mesh Survey. Um, and there was a couple of interesting um, statistical sections in there. One um, was what um, percentage of the respondents um, were either using service mesh in production, development, um, or evaluating it. Um, the results were 60% were um, using service mesh in production of 10% uh, in development and 19% were evaluating. So. Um, basically, 70% of the respondents were um, using some service mesh, um, either in production or development. Um, I'm sure that number has probably grown. Um, and some of the another section of the survey was um, what features were these um, adopters, service mesh adopters, actually looking for. 79% um, were looking for security, 78% um, for observability, so both very close to 80%. Um, 60 percent were looking for um, traffic management and just less than that 56 percent looking for stability so um, just sort of a quick recap from you know the survey which was probably done about a year ago um, on at least trends then and and again I think service mesh will be um, a little bit uh, more used um, than the survey results at that time um, I talk about IstioCon 2022. That was basically held the end of April in 2022. Um, one of the key things that we talked about there for um, the future roadmap at the time um, was day two operations. Um, we wanted to pay a bunch of attention to stability, um, security, extensibility, and reach as well. And at that point, we had, um, I think, six fairly full slides. Louie and I actually presented the roadmap at that point. Um, of things we wanted to do. Um, one of the, the first things we wanted to do was, um, or one of the first things I guess that was announced at IstioCon 2022, and I know it was mentioned in the welcome, um, is Istio had applied to the CNCF to become an incubating project. Um, and uh, we basically continued to uh, work, work with that and in, in September of 2022, um, CNCF accepted Istio as an incubating project. And through a lot of diligent work with a bunch of people, um, we actually became a graduated project in July of 2023. So not too long ago. Um, so that was one of the things we talked about. Um, one of the other things that uh, we didn't talk about actually, um, this was introduced in September, um, was a new uh, data plane mode, Ambient, um, I know John will talk a little bit about that um, in a little bit, um, but it, the, the, one of the re key reasons that uh, it was brought about was to um, bring a simplified operational experience to users as well as um, a bunch of other benefits. Um, it was 
originally released as experimental and with the 1.18.0 release, um, we now have um, ambient mode as an alpha feature. Um, since then, we've been continuing to add features as we uh, get to progress the beta. Um, I know it was mentioned earlier, the REST space Z tunnel. Um, we've done some stuff with service entry, um, workload entry, peer authentication, and DNS proxy. Um, as then we, we sort of get into a bunch of feature promotion. So one of the things we talked about was stability and trying to um, make Istio more stable. So what, one of the things we were pushing on is to try to uh, get a bunch of the features promoted. Um, some of those promotions that happened were um, external authorization got promoted to beta with 1.16. Um, the gateway API um, support. Um, a gateway API went beta itself in July of 2022. And at that point, we claimed um, beta support as well. Um, in terms of trying to increase our um, installation and upgrade um, support, we moved Helm installation to beta, as well as the Canary upgrade revision tags going to beta at 1.17. Um, earlier this year, um, dual stack support um, we introduced as, as experimental. Um, and then we talked a little bit about uh, workload group and getting that uh, promoted as well. Um, talk a little bit about stability. We also should talk a little bit about security, what happened with security um, as part of the um, CNCF um, progression. And to become graduate, we had another security formal audit done in 2022. Um, and I believe the beginning of 2023, um, there's a blog uh, where we talked about uh, some of the results from that audit. Um, we did a, we, we started a bunch of um, fuzz testing way back, probably in 2021. Um, and I, we continued to expand on that. I think the last number I saw was we added another 50 tests and I'm sure we've added more since then. Um, in terms of additional um, platform support, um, we did also release ARM support in 1.15. Um, to go back a little bit on the security, um, and hopefully I'm not going to uh, cause any issues going forward, knock on wood. Um, back in 2021, um, we had eight security bulletins that we released for Istio. Um, we stayed flat in 2022, and we've had eight. Um, we had eight last year, and so far this year we've had three. Um, so hopefully uh, we continue the uh, a downward trend for this year. Um, with that, I think I'm going to turn it over to John um, with looking at where we're going. Great. Thanks, Eric. That's That was awesome. Um, you know, I've been involved day to day on the project for, for quite a few years now, and I, yeah, I forgot about a lot of stuff we've done in the past year. So it's really great to, to kind of look back and see all the progress we made. Uh, I'm also really excited to look forward at what we're continuing to work on, because even since last year, the community has grown quite a bit. Uh, a lot of that likely related to the CNCF donation, as well as some new uh, great community members getting involved. So we've seen a lot of increase in project velocity and development. Um, so I'm excited to talk about what we're working on and going to be working on for the next year. Um, if you've been to any Eastio cons in the last couple of years or Eastio Day, um, you've probably seen actually slides that look very similar to that, uh, to this, sorry. And that's because what we've been working on hasn't changed so much on a on a year to year basis. Uh, the details, of course, and where we are along those those priorities has changed, uh, but the general trends have remained the same. You know, when I start, first started working on Eastio almost five years ago, the project's priority was to kind of build out the value of service mesh, convince users of the value of service mesh, and then make sure once they were convinced and tried out Eastio that it didn't explode and cause production outages and whatnot. And those three things took a lot of effort and many years to build out. At this point, we've mostly solved those issues, right? I think there's general industry acknowledgement that service mesh provides a lot of great functionality, right? We have this rich security layers, we have great observability that you gain, and then the whole slew of you know bespoke APIs to do things like traffic routing, mirrors, canaries, circuit breaking, all these things that you may want to add after your initial adoption phase. Uh, now the, uh, the area that we're focusing on is making sure that we can expand that adoption. So service mesh and Istio provides all this functionality, but it does come with a cost, right? 
There's the complexity cost, the operational cost, the resource costs, et cetera. So for the kind of next stage of service mesh, it's really about reducing those costs, breaking barriers to, to compatibility and entry, and making it so that we can give those features to all users um, without any blockers. So everything in the roadmap is really centered around that. And there's a bunch of different aspects of what we're doing, but they all tie into that same goal. So some of the things we're going to be talking about is some new big projects that tie into that goal. Uh, the two main ones being the new ambient mode, which we've talked about a bit already. And we have some previous talk from Lynn a few minutes ago. And later on in the sessions, we have some more talks about ambient. So I'll just give a more of a brief overview. And the gateway API, which is a new traffic management API from the Kubernetes group, which basically takes a lot of the existing functionality that East 2 had in its own APIs and moves them into common core APIs that are shared between other vendors. And they have a lot of improvements over East 2 APIs. Uh, we're also going to be promoting a lot of much smaller features and stabilizing existing features or making small tweaks that help reduce the barriers to entry. And finally, we want to have really strong integration with other projects and standards because we know that Istio is not an island, right? Istio fits into a much larger picture of a platform. Um, so if you have a certain certificate management or telemetry or observability backend, we want to make sure that Istio seamlessly fits in with that so that you can easily adopt Istio without, you know, having to deal with the uh, incompatibilities between your different products and solutions that you're using. Good. Next slide, please. So I talked about Ambient. I just want to dial in on this a bit more. Um, it's been almost a year, I think, since we announced Ambient um, in the initial experimental release. And since then, we've spent a lot of time working on stabilizing it. We've been making kind of refining the API a bit, um, the implementation, and all these things. So that's continuing to be one of the biggest uh, investments from the project. Um, so we're working to drive this towards more stable uh, stability level and try to get to production readiness sometime in the next year. If you go to the next slide, unlike other features, uh, Ambient's huge, right? If we introduce some new, I don't know, routing feature, some cool load balancing functionality or something, you know, we have to implement some new API, we write a little bit of code, we write an integration test, a document, and off we go. We're pretty much done, right? Ambient's kind of a whole different thing, right? It's kind of a whole re-architecture of how service mesh works. And it has all these different layers that we're working on. I won't go over all these, but right, we have new APIs. We have to rethink how multi-cluster, multi-network work. Uh, there's more issues with compatibility with the different platforms. Uh, Justin talked about this a bit in his previous talk. Uh, you know, we want to make sure we handle all the different platforms uh, that do networking in different ways. There's all sorts of new trust and security boundaries we need to worry about. So there's all this stuff that we're working on. So it's a really big project that's kind of tying in every aspect of Istio. Um, you know, there's no there's no part of Istio that's untouched by Ambient. So we are hard at work on all these areas, um, driving it to you know more stable levels. Uh, one of the things that is most helpful for people that are listening here is, I mean, if you want to contribute to Istio directly through code or documentation, that's awesome. But the even more critical thing we need is actually user feedback. So we want to make sure that all these decisions that we've made actually align with what you, the users of Istio, uh, are interested in in a service mesh. Um, so if you haven't tried it out, we would strongly encourage you to go try out Ambient in a non-production environment and give us feedback on GitHub, Slack, wherever. Um, not just like, how oh, I ran into this small bug here, but are you excited about this? Is this something that you would adopt in production? What would you do differently? What do you like? What do you dislike, et cetera? So we're really looking to gather user feedback. Um, so please try it out if you haven't already. Next up is the Gateway API and Gamma. So there's another talk on this later, actually by myself and Keith uh, tomorrow, I believe, that goes into a deep dive, so I'll just be brief. Uh, but this is a new API that we've been working on in collaboration with the broader Kubernetes ecosystem, not just the core Kubernetes, but a bunch of other vendors as well, like Nginx, HAProxy, AWS, et cetera, uh, to kind of define a consistent API across the ecosystem that is implemented by Istio 
And we're working on adding ingress support, uh, which was the initial use case for Gateway. But we have also been driving support for mesh um, so that we can use the same API for ingress and mesh traffic, just like we do with Eastio. So this API has been progressing quite a bit. Um, it's now at the beta level and it's rapidly approaching stable. Um, so we are actively working on that as well as moving the mesh support out of experimental. The mesh support's trailing behind a little bit. Um, so part of our efforts as a cyber stabilization is to make sure that Eastio users can use all the functionality that they use today in Eastio, but with the new APIs. And I'll hand it back over to Eric. All right, thanks, John. Um, yeah, I'll go back and um, sort of reiterate, um, looking for feedback for, uh, for, for the ambient mesh stuff. I know we want to uh, progress it from alpha to beta to, to stable, and, and part of that is trying to solidify the APIs. Right. We don't want to we don't want to come up with some set of APIs and then get it out there and decide that, you know, if they were slightly wrong. Um, we should do a tweak here or there and then have to, uh, to to sort of reflect that back into the into the product. It's easier for us to uh, to take that feedback earlier on to help solidify that so that we can uh, sort of sort of get it right the first time, I guess. I know back in the earliest early Istio days. Um, I know it seemed that uh, there was a lot of churn um, and that wasn't necessarily a good thing um, for both developers and users alike. So um, anything we can do to, to, to collect some of that earlier feedback would be uh, extremely helpful. Um, I know there's an ambient uh, Q&A sort of thing coming up later, um, or as John said, Slack, um, GitHub, anything like that. Um, so besides um, and on an earlier chart, we said ambient and, and the gateway APIs, we still want to continue with the stabilization and promotion of existing features. Um, so part of that is to get back um, to, do, to doing some of that. Originally, uh, a couple of years ago, there was, a, there was some work to try to, to help um, do this. Uh, we created a repo at the time and, and uh, so some charts and sort of, you know, defined, you know, what we thought the different um, levels would be, you know, what, what does it mean to be alpha? What does it mean to be at a beta level? Um, and some of that has sort of, or sort of fell on the wayside. Um, and there's some people now that have stepped up and we sort of started this ISCU enhancement subgroup and um, Whitney is leading that effort. So uh, thanks to Whitney and all the people that are working on that. Um, and the, the part of the idea of that group is to take a look at, you know, the existing features as, you know, they are, um, verify that indeed they're at the level that uh, we say they are. So um, if they're at alpha, make sure they're at alpha. If they say they're at beta, uh, make sure they're at beta. Um, we also want to make sure that we're going to continue the momentum. So um, if they've gone from alpha to beta, you know, we're still continuing the momentum to, uh, to stable. Um, Maybe we think they were beta and um, in reality, they were probably really still at alpha. Um, let's make sure that uh, we either get it to be beta or you know, we, we move back to, to alpha. And for those things that um, we're just not really using anymore um, and we need to deprecate, let's uh, make sure we're moving things in the right direction. The whole idea being um, make sure that uh, you as users know where things are, um, understand what we're doing, and, and try to keep things working on um, either either up, down, or, or um, continue where they're at. Um, but we want to make sure the users understand what we're doing there. Um, in terms of features, oops. in terms of uh, features that uh, we, we want to continue to promote, um, the telemetry API, um, adding some things in there. Um, I mentioned earlier the experimental dual stack support. We want to continue to promote that to, to alpha as well as the IPv6. Uh, we want to make sure that um, things related to WASM, we continue to move forward. And um, another feature that um, is being looked at by Costin and Keith, I believe, um, is this Istio foundational safe mode where um, you can be assured that uh, you're not ending up using stuff that's, you know, alpha and experimental. 
um, basically by default those things to be disabled um, and only those things that uh, are stable um, would be available to you. Um, so that's um, some stuff that we're trying to, to move forward with. Um, and with continued integration, I'm gonna turn it back to John. Uh, yeah, so I briefly touched on this, but you know, Eastio provides a lot of functionality on its own, but its real power is its ability to kind of integrate with other offerings, right? If you install Eastio to get today, you get a lot of things out of the box. Uh, we come with a certificate authority. Uh, we can emit some met metrics in the Prometheus format and a few other formats. But the real value comes when you start plugging things into all your existing infrastructure, right? You may already have some enterprise grade certificate authority that you want to use to now provision mess certificates. We want to make sure that that integration is seamless and easy to do. Um, similarly, there's a lot of integration work on the telemetry and observability side, right? With things like Kiali, Prometheus, and one of the big new ones is Open Telemetry, which is kind of an effort to consolidate the kind of disparate telemetry tracing logging landscape under one project with a unified set of schemas and protocols and et cetera. So we've been investing a lot of effort into Open Telemetry and making sure that Eastio can really easily uh, fit into an existing platform that's utilizing open telemetry. Uh, similarly, we have a lot of uh, orchestration tools like Argo CD, Flux, and many others, and Helm kind of in the same area. Uh, we want to make sure that using those, uh, Eastio is easy to deploy using these tools, and that Eastio can also augment these tools to make them more powerful, right? Um, so there's kind of a double integration there. Like we, Eastio can be used to provide say canary routing features that can be used to safely roll out your own applications. Uh, and the same tools can also be used to safely roll out new versions of Eastio or to enable Eastio for workloads. Uh, finally, there's a lot of existing standards that we're working on uh, closely integrating with. Wasm is a big one. Uh, there's been a lot of work in the Wasm area for supporting Eastio as well as kind of the specifications around that. Uh, and open telemetry again i mentioned um, open telemetry does a lot of things so it's both a standard and kind of a protocol uh, we're looking at it from all angles um, with that we we have a few more minutes left that we're open for q a um, right now it's just me and eric here from the toc in about 30 minutes we have a whole session with uh, everyone on the toc that's around for a just dedicated to q a um, so if you don't get your question answered now, we will bring all those questions to that session and answer them. Uh, and we'll have, you know, a lot more folks involved there as well. Um, yeah, so feel so free yeah, to ask you can... the chat. Yep. I also asked a few questions of my own on the chat about what were your favorite changes in the last year and what changes are you looking forward to most in the next year? Uh, if you're interested, we'd love to hear feedback of how users are using Eastio. Uh, it's always great to hear from, from users. Otherwise, we'll end up getting back to that coffee break that got skipped um, due to the late start. Yep. Yeah. If you have any questions, start thinking about them now and come back and join us at, I think, about 50 minutes from now for the Q&A talk. Um, we'll be happy to answer any questions you have on Eastio. I think the, the talk is focused on Ambient, but if we have uh, time or, you know, we can definitely talk about any, any Eastio topic. So. All right. Thanks, everyone.